James is having grilled tilapia, a penne pasta, and salad on the side, and then that um, pistachio cake for dessert. And I'm going to be talking about these movies. The Dry Got the Top of the Stack, Kidnap and Ransom, I think that was Series 2, um, Miss Fisher and the Crypt of Tears, Test Pattern, El Angel, Dressed to Kill. And I'll just mention that the pasta came, it was uh, that. And so it also came with the little um, spicy stuff, which James won't eat. And a bunch of sausage, which the dogs are going to love, because I don't know if James is going to eat it. And uh, I'll get talking about the... The movies but anyway the uh, the pasta was easy to make it only took a couple minutes and because um, it's already made but at the same time I'm looking at that price tag at 2848 I think it's that and I mean we got um, twice as much as this we'd already I cooked it up in the morning so half of it and um, so, but that's all the sausage that was there. I just cooked that separately. Anyway, um, I'm thinking pasta is so instant already. Why do you need to buy already made pasta? It seems crazy. But anyway. So what we got is uh, four meals, two meals for two people. Yes. Uh, yeah, so for seven 20. bucks for each meal. And honestly, if if you don't put aside, you know, if you have just pasta, I bet that would just be two meals if you're really really hungry. And honestly, you could probably go to I don't know what it costs to go to a restaurant and get all you can eat pasta, but it, can it possibly be thirty bucks for two people? Maybe. But anyway. It seems kind of steep to me, although we got it for free, so I'm very thankful, but um, anyway, yeah. just like the cake, we got it for free. I get the cake or anything. Cake's like that. awesome, but... We've been eating foods that we shouldn't eat lately, but we we've been hiking been, a lot. We haven't been eating that much recently. Yeah, so I figure we're burning it off, I hope. But anyway, The Dry was an Australian show. And it um, was, it was okay. Honestly, nothing in this stack was really great, as far as I was concerned. But um, like I couldn't really understand the point of the murders, even when it was explained at the mystery was explained at the end. I'm like, okay, but surely there could have been another way or something like that. I don't know. It just didn't really make sense to me. But, um, but it was, it was all right. Kidnap and Ransom. Oh, this is complete series one and two. Okay. So I think I'd seen series one before or something, because some of this seemed familiar, but not all of it. And, um, it was okay. I, I really think that people should be more careful about, um, traveling to other places in the world and you know, without knowing the culture or anything like that. And honestly, I, I think that it, if it's not illegal, it should definitely be illegal for people to pay ransom. And I know people are thinking, oh, but if my loved one... Yeah, well then people just continue to hold people, kidnap them and hold them hostage if you pay ransom. That's, you know, you can't reward something like that. That's terrible. So anyway, I I have a hard time liking this show because it's all about a guy who's ne negotiating grants and payments to get people back, whatever. Miss Fisher and the Crypt of Tears. I'm not a Miss Fisher fan anyway. I think she's pretty lame, but um, the whole Great Gatsby-ish I don't know. Uh, 1929. So she's she goes to. It says in 1929 Jerusalem. 
she rescues a Bedouin girl held captive after da 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 um, Held I'd, captive by whom, or is that the mystery? I, well, it was Palestinian government, I think, or it's a prison, I don't know. Okay. Anyway, it, it seemed ridiculous to me, because here, this is 1929, and she's running around, and I mean, it's not a really short skirt, but it's a red short skirt, and, and sure, you could say, well, she wouldn't get in trouble unless she got caught, or whatever, well. <laughs> Okay. Um, in Palestine, I, she's walking up. Yeah, back in 1929. And I'm like, okay, I remember I had an ex-boyfriend who has, um, he, he remembered when uh, he was younger and when he was a kid and they went to um, Saudi Arabia, his, him, his family, his mother, himself, his dad. And his, he remembers his mom crying in the bathtub while she was scrubbing black paint off of her legs. And it took hours to scrub it off because um, she didn't realize what the culture was like. And she went out wearing shorts. And she was grabbed by a bunch of guys and her legs were painted black. So, and that, she was lucky, honestly. Uh, that that's all that happened to her. So anyway, now women should be ridiculous. allowed to. I wear. yeah, I'm not saying that they're. I'm saying that you have to know what culture you're getting yourself into. And honestly, stuff like this aggressive propaganda crap that's saying, oh yeah, it's just a you know, uh, we're we're on side with them and they're on side with us or whatever and it's when you spread stuff like this around even suggesting that it's like that now would be ridiculous but 1929 come on come on yeah test pattern this one brought up some interesting and very important issues now, why did it get so loud, low down on the stack? It just wasn't great as a movie. It kind of dragged along. It wasn't uh, enough story for a movie or it wasn't put together well enough. I don't know. But I really wanted to like this more because the there were some important issues. I think there was too much... Um, suggestion of race being a factor or something like that but um anyway it's about a woman who ends up i'm gonna give some stuff away here to tell tell what it's about i don't know if it gives it away and that yeah it does in fact so i'm not really giving that away you could have read the box about it so anyway a woman ends up she's she's in love with her boyfriend and he's he's she's a african-american woman who uh, she's not totally African. You can see that she has freckles and stuff like that, right? So um, she would be mixed race. and But she has this boyfriend who, he's a white guy. And she is way hotter than he is. But anyway, they're together and they're in love. And he's a tattoo artist. artist and she has a little tattoo when they first get together. And then at, um, at one one point like later you notice that she has a big arm like her whole arm is tattooed and stuff right so anyway which you might think okay well he's a tattoo artist and she would be interested in eventually would happen whatever but anyway so she's goes out her friend wants her to go to a club with her so she and her boyfriend doesn't want to go she's like he's like I hate that place I'm not gonna just go it sounds like a friend you can have a girls night whatever so, um, but he's like, take a, take a, you know, hire a cab kind of thing, because just in case, and she's like, I don't want to drink, I have to work in the morning, and he's like, take a cab anyway, you know, and so, um, he is a really good boyfriend for her, he, it shows him making her breakfast in the morning and stuff like that, he's a tattoo artist, right, so, I mean, mornings wouldn't be a busy time for him, <laughs> for work. And so he does things like that. He's pretty domestic and he's very loving with her. And 
anyway, so she goes out and her friend is, a couple guys come over and her friend is interested in one of the guys and she's kind of peer pressuring this girl, this woman, this young beautiful woman to go along with just let these guys buy us drinks and whatever, let just dance whatever because you know she her friends interested in one of the guys right and so she keeps telling the guy I have a boyfriend and he's like oh, okay okay and but he the one guy who's interested in her he keeps um, he keeps pushing and pushing and the, so they like she's like I don't want to have any drinks and then finally she has a drink and then she has another you know and uh, it's really her friend is peer pressuring her into this and Honestly, her friend is not her friend. She's not her friend. Well, there are if you people have, like that. There's people like that, but her friend is not a friend. And so, anyway. Um, what was that? I don't want the fly on my food. No. So, anyway, the girl ends up, her young woman, the beautiful woman, she ends up getting date raped. She can't remember. She wakes up in a guy's, some stranger's bed, this guy's bed, right? And... Um, the guy's kind of acting like it's no big deal or whatever, but honestly, like, they drugged her. They've given, they said it was marijuana gummy bears, but I doubt it was marijuana because she was really out of it. And when her, like, later on, so she ends up at home and her, she's telling her boyfriend about this and he's like, we're going to the hospital, you know, we're going to get, and she's like, I don't want to go, I don't want to go. And so he makes sure that they go and uh he's t he said i went to the bar because you weren't coming home and the and um your friend was there and she was vomiting and she was she i couldn't even understand her i she couldn't get into the house on her own i had to help her in so he's he's thinking you guys were really drugged like she was so out of it and so and he said like when he showed up that the guy that was interested in her friend, he got lost, you know. So, anyway, um, then she's throughout the the day, like they're having, they're going to a hospital, and they take her ID and they make her say say that, well, you're going to have to pay if, if you want your ID back, right? Authorized payment, and she's the. the boyfriend's like you didn't do anything like they're uh they took two hours to tell her well we don't have the um the ability to give you a rape rape kit uh whatever but they took two hours to do that in the meantime she's waiting she's waiting and she has to pay for the for them to tell her that they she still has to pay for a doctor's visit even though they didn't have the ability to service her right Where is this set? in the united states so anyway and we just watched a documentary about rape kits and how they're generally they're just sitting in a box and nobody's even looking at the thing so that's even worse to know right but in any case she she goes through all this she goes to i think it's three hospitals before she can get somebody to help her and then she ends up she has to pee so bad because they need her boyfriend's like, you know that they need that first pee in the morning sample, so you hold it, you know, and, and she's like, I can't anymore, so she pees in a cup, she spills a cup, and she's crying, you know, because she knows that, that that's gone, right, and, and so, anyway, it's just terrible, she's going through all this, and, and she doesn't think that they'll, they're going to do anything, and then the police call her and say, oh, we're closing the file, because so we there's nothing we could do about it kind of thing right and um and she's feeling really bad she's the whole movie she, there's some flashbacks and there's one flashback that um it's something that i've said repeatedly uh her tattoo artist boyfriend before like it's a flashback of before he gave her the big arm tattoo and he said i i want to tattoo you because i guess it's like branding like because you're mine right so he acknowledges the fact that it's like branding because like it's a property thing right which is really an amazing thing that a man i don't know if a man would be upfront about that right but 
he is and and he's on he's a good boyfriend through a thing but it, then you're thinking about all the meals he's making her and it's like well it's kind of like you know feeding livestock or whatever but you know so it gives you this kind of you're thinking about this in the background and she because she is you know she's thinking about this too because this guy who uh, assaulted her he's a white guy and so she's thinking about this stuff right but it could I don't know that it had to be a race thing I don't know that it was intended to be because the her friends guy that she was interested in at the bar he seemed Latino right so I don't know if they were really wanting to push the white black issue um, but uh, yeah it's uh, it's something that I've always said that the a guy when a, a relationship is new or whatever and a, a woman ends up with a tattoo the guy has been whether she realizes it or not he's been pressuring her to do it and it is branding even if he gets the tattoo first and says it's like a marriage situation it's branding and it's ownership and it's coercion to make her get that tattoo um, so yeah it's just something that people should should be aware of should really think about L Angel subtitles I have a hard time watching the movie looked okay and then it's like right at the beginning he's this thief he sneaks into people's houses and burglarizes whatever and he's like I was born to be a thief or whatever I was born born as a thief and it's like no nobody is born as a thief but he's this young guy and you're thinking okay well he might grow out of it whatever um, but honestly I don't care for it dress to kill this one had Michael Caine or yeah Michael Caine in it in a very different role than I have ever seen Michael Caine That's in a movie. He almost always plays himself. Yeah, and uh, I it certainly didn't. This is not a um, like a Rocky Horror Picture Show kind of good transvestite movie or a, um, what what is it called? Something Queen of the Desert or something like that. I can't remember. And not not like that. This is a very bad transvestite movie, criminal, murderous transvestite movie. And it's at the bottom of a, the it, best, the mediocre it list. It was right? because I just have a hard time believing that the whole thing occurred. Honestly, there was the first opening scene. The woman is, I mean, it's a dream, right? You figure out it's a dream, but that the presumably the woman's having. But it's like, why would she have a dream of? Her breasts being soaked, like she's in the shower soaping her breasts over and over and over, like way too much. It's like, okay, yeah, they're clean. You know, nobody would... Anyway, um, so there's that. Like there's the whole too much, too much sex showing. And... I hope they didn't get Michael Caine. <laughs> no, they didn't show him soaping up. So anyway, there's that. And then there's the whole, when the murder happens, I'm like... Really? So this transvestite followed them in the cab going across and whatever. Like how could the how could the murderer have found them? Have followed them, found them, killed them, whatever. It's or her. It's um it doesn't make sense to me. And so there were a I guess this was a long time ago, nineteen eighty, whatever, but I honestly expected better so it didn't get a high rating. I'm going to put this inside and hope that makes a difference. It will make Do you want me to put the fish in? Yes, if you would. Okay, so you talk about whatever books you were going to talk about. Okay, so uh, these are the books that I'm dealing with, that I have been dealing with the last little while. Clash of Fundamentalism, Crusades, Jihad, and Modernity, Tariq Ali. True believer, something. I think it's communism. Maybe he's a social democrat, anti-social, anti-democrat. Is what most of those uh, folks tend to be. Uh, and um, and you're getting that from a person who thinks of himself as a left wing. At any rate, um, then we've got Will, 
the autobiography to Gordy Liddy. I call him Gordy Liddy. And I hope he's still alive so he can hear what I think. Anyway, and then he can die. A Roman by Polanski, Roman Polanski. And uh, The Family by Ed Sanders, a national bestseller. So I think I'll start off with this. Uh, it's a pretty good book. Um, when was it uh, first published? 1977, maybe, and then republished. 78. No, I, I bet you it was 72 or something like that, and then 88. Is that edition? 1971, 72, I presume it was paper, and then 1989 for uh, that's cloth. So it was just in the wake of Charlie Manson getting his convicted. I think he had a conviction, a death, a death for the death penalty, but it was um, it wasn't commuted. They changed the law first in California, I think, and then in the United States. We can see what we're doing. These parts of the United States. Anyway, no, I, was, I think it was just California. And uh, so, Charlie Manson, they, he didn't go off. They never let him go, but uh, yeah. he got uh, life in prison and never was paroled. Thank you. Well, he never was paroled after the murder conviction. Convictions. He was paroled. Uh, he was convicted, I think, uh, for a ser fairly serious crime in 1960, and it was a 10-year sentence. When was Sharon Tate murdered? Oh, something like August the 6th, 1969. He shouldn't have been walking free. But he was paroled. He shouldn't have been released until, I think it was, uh, it was somewhere around March, something or other, uh, 1960. He shouldn't have been out until March or maybe June 1970. But they let him loose. Catch him. And, um, you know, too often, so often, too often, uh, people pay for the certain percentage of people who are recidivists. And, uh, you know, they'll say, oh, you know, like only you know, low percentage, 4% or something like that. Um, you know become recidivists. No, those are the ones that get caught. I don't know how many uh, re-offend, but uh, I suspect it's way too high. So uh, there's some pretty good pictures in here, uh, things that I don't think I've seen elsewhere. This one uh, was out in the day. I can remember when Chuckles Manson um, first made the news, you know, like there were people saying, oh, you know, like Rolling Stone apparently was saying, oh, he's he's just a, a victim, he's being victimized, and they are, Charlie Manson, they, they, the they cops are pro, per, prosecuting, persecuting, frankly, a, um, an innocent hippie or something like that. You remember, here's a picture of uh, Chuckles Manson. I believe this is 1968, uh, presumably on a high on acid or something like that. I don't know. Maybe that was just his ordinary look. It always looked a little bit freaky to me. But I can remember when I first saw a picture in the newspaper, I'm saying, this guy doesn't look like a hippie. And it wasn't just the fact that he was older, I think he was like mid-30s or something like that. There was just something uh, that didn't make him look like the love generation. And here he is, you know, like again, here's a poor uh, do-gooder judge. You know, you can see he's kind of like uh, got the Jimmy Carter look about the eyes and stuff like that. Like he, he just can't read reality. Here's uh, Chuck Manson. Uh, back in the day, I believe he was 15 at this point in time. He's small for his age. I think he was five foot six as a mature adult, not when he was 15. Maybe he was, but I doubt it. And you can just see this look, you know, like he's he say, I got this guy, as the English say, 
I've got this guy sussed. You know, he's he's figured him out. He was. Uh, where, they don't give the name of this poor uh, judge. Judge uh, at a juvenile center in Indianapolis in 1949. But he was on his way. That's Charlie Manson, not the judge. To Father Flanagan's Boys Town. Now, uh, you know, somewhere along the line, when he was in. Uh, uh, custody is a juvenile and before this presumably poor chuckles was subjected to uh, gang uh, gang rape so uh, but I have a relative uh, considerably younger than me a generation younger than me who uh, went through the same thing and he so far as I know it never turned up like uh, Charlie Manson yeah, and uh, this uh, poor fellow who went through, I'm going to call out Alberta Social Services. They uh, took him away from his dad, my relative, and uh, he, um, my relative, was subjected to gang anal rape. And uh, um, he had an awful mother. His mother uh, would uh, pinch him when. Uh, when this relative of mine was a youngster, he, she was caught pinching him. Like apparently, more than once, he pinching him. And he was a very nice, nice, nice little fellow. I knew him when he was young. So, uh, yeah, as far as I'm concerned, his own chuckles. He was raised without a dad. And uh, that isn't a good formula for success uh, in terms of raising peaceful, not necessarily passive, males. You know, have a father figure. The stats seem to indicate that it's a bad idea, but uh, there are lots of people out there flying on the left wing who um, wouldn't agree with that, but I kind of go with the stats. I'm sorry, folks. So there's a picture of poor Sharon Tate. She was uh, one of those, she came, I think, from Oklahoma. She was one of those girls that was... Uh, uh, Toddler in the TR. Yeah. yeah. So they, uh, she was in beauty queen contests when she was a, a very young princess, shall we, let me put it that way. Uh, her parents, I, you know, like her, her dad was in the military. I'm not sure what her mom uh, did, Doris uh, Tate, but the one good thing about her is she uh, made sure she turned up to, at parole hearings and made sure the Chuckles and uh, presumably other folks uh, weren't paroled. They shouldn't have been. The, these murders were so awful. Now here they describe, this is uh, Lino and Rosemary. Was it Rosemary? Is that? Yeah, Rosemary. La Bianca. This is their place where they live. That's a place that Chuckles broke into. Mm -hmm. uh, how would you describe that? Uh, uh, what class? Mansion? Yeah. So upper, middle, lower, very much a class. Very upper. Yeah, yeah. It's very upper. So it's uh, basically near Hollywood. And um, one of the previous owners was a guy called Walt Disney. Mm. So, you know, Walt Disney in the day, maybe not when he lived here, I'd consider upper class, uh, economically. Right? But here they 